again to The Bible Unmasked, Season 2, Episode 20. I'm Elizabeth. This is Dexter. And we are so glad to have our guests with us. We have two guests here. Um, we have Barbara Samuels. Welcome, Barbara. Thank you. Thanks for having, having me. Yes. And we also have Trafina Brown with us. Welcome. Welcome, Trafina. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Hi, Barbara. Hey. <laughs> Wait, you guys know each other? <laughs> I sort of kind of do. <laughs> we are buds. <laughs> so we are going to be studying the book of Zechariah today, and we have our theme for that is visions of hope and encouragement. Dexter, can you tell us a little bit about Zechariah and your theme here? Wonderful. I am um, Zachariah. This is during the before they rebuilt the temple. Um, the people were demoralized. They were discouraged. Um, you know, they were exiled. They came back from from Persia. You know, with 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 heavy hearts, no hope, and and they were just twiddling their, their thumbs. And Zachariah started getting a bunch of visions. And the theme that, 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 that I came up with was visions of hope and encouragement. Because when you look at all the visions, they had to do with giving them hope. He saw the lampstand and the, 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 the vision of the lampstand and the word of hope he got from God for Zerubbabel, who was the governor, was not by might, nor by power, but by the spirit of the living God. He, he saw um, a brand being plucked from the fire. And he had a vision for Joshua, um, the high priest. He saw a vision of, of, of somebody with a measuring line, measuring the, the dimensions of what the temple would be, you know, before there was any building blocks in place. So I, I looked at that theme, visions of hope and encouragement, which is what God gave him. And I said, what would, how does this theme, how would it relate or apply to entrepreneurs and them mm. starting their business? Um, so I, I, I brought in some heavy hitters. I, I know Ella Barbara Samuels. She has a diabetes two business and she'll, she'll tell us more about it. And she had to step out by faith. And then Trafina Brown, she did something even more ridiculous and crazy. She started a healthcare business while homeschooling her children. I know y'all are thinking, what is wrong with this woman? She has... <laughs> She has broad <laughs> shoulders. So I, I, want, I wanted these entrepreneurs to share with us through the book of Zechariah, just like he, he gave visions of hope and encouragement. What, what keeps you guys going? What's your deep why? When you're knocked down, when you're discouraged, when you feel like throwing in the towel, why do you keep going? Why do you keep pushing ahead? And that's going to be our journey on this episode of the Bible Unmasked. Okay, great. This is going to be a good one. Let's get started here by having a word of prayer, and then we'll grab our Bibles. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you again that we can come and that we can discuss your word. And we thank you for our two guests here today, and may you continue to bless them in their work. And right now we ask for anointing of all of our lips that we may speak um, words of truth and that you may speak through us to encourage and, and uplift um, our viewers. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise okay, God. so we're going to Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 4. <laughs> the other angel said, hurry and say to that young man, Jerusalem will someday be so full of people and livestock that there won't be room enough for everyone. Many will live outside the city walls. Wow. So mm -hmm. here is our tip, a vision for our dry places. And our question is, what helps you hold on to the hope of a betterment for those dry places in your life? Yeah, hope for betterment. Eh? And so y'all oh, get, wow. get the pity ladies. Jerusalem has nothing in it. There's almost a barren place. It's almost like a wasteland in a sense. And, and, and he's seeing vision of somebody measuring the city. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and here's the word. Look, this place is going to be ram cram. It's going to have so many people. Folks are going to have to live outside the walls. I mean, how, how ridiculous could you get? Right? So, so let me start with, with you, Trafina. I mean, you, you, you have a, a staffing agency business. That's, a, that's hard work. We ran mm. one of those for 
about five years. I did the HR for, for that business. And sometimes I would, some years I would hire a hundred people. I'm not exaggerating. And at the end of the year, I would have like seven or 10 out of a hundred. The turnover was, was really high. Um, it was just a lot of work. So to tell us how you got started, what's the vision you had, um, and why, and what keeps you going, you know, when you're discouraged with this business? Hi, so I started this business um, a little over a year ago, and um, I got started because I wanted, uh, I guess, more, a little more flexibility um, with being at my, ch with my children and family and while working because I still need to work. So um, we got started and uh, for this past over a year, it's been uh, up and down. And like you said, you will have a lot of employees one day and then the next day you wonder, where did they go? Um, but the vision that we have, uh, myself and my partner that started this company is um, no matter what, we're going to provide whole care. And when we talk about whole care, we're talking about care for the staff we have, for the facilities we serve, and anyone around us. And so when we get knocked down, we maintain that hope. And what gives me hope is, for example, these Bible stories that I'm reading, these scriptures that I'm reading, it, they tell me that God is limitless. And as I even read this Zachariah story, um, they were trying to measure Jerusalem and pretty much the Lord said, hey, we cannot be measured. Wow. We are bigger than this box that you want to put us in. Wow. And so for me, I, that's a message for me. You know, you cannot put box, a God in a box. You can't put your business in a box. You can't put your family in a box because God is bigger than that. And he is going to provide. So these stories are stories of hope for me. Because it, um, in Jerusalem, it talks about um, the people that will be limitless, that you can't even count. And I see God as being limitless. So that's what gives me hope. When for the perfect example, today, one of the facility call and say, hey, we're canceling five of your ships. Yikes. We Our census is low. But I have hope because I know by Thursday, the census is going back up and they're going to call for more than five. Wow. So, you know, I have hope and the faith that God is always going to come through because he promised just like he did with these children um, um, in the story of Zachariah. He wow. always promises us and he keeps his promises. Wow. Wow. Lady, you're preaching already and we just got started. Wow. <laughs> All right. Elder Barbara, tell us about your, um, and, and both of these, both of these amazing women are nurses and what's interesting is I like that your businesses, um, I'm taking it for granted that nursing is your passion, mm -hmm. um, your, but your business, it stems from your expertise, your strength, your passion. So Elder, t tell us about your start. I mean, you've been a nurse for over 17 years. Why go through the headache of wanting to step out on your own and start your own business when you can just work your three 12-hour shifts, collect your pay, take your days off? And just have a kind of easy life. What prompted me to do this? I'm going to say I know this is God who called me because it's, you know, it's so funny that you'd mention that because I've always thought that nursing was going to be it the way I've known it in the hospital setting because it offered stability, which was one of the reasons why I went into nursing at the first place was it offered stability and that I can depend on it. And then it sounds crazy that here I am now stepping outside of that stability and walking into on, you know, uncharted waters. But what are the things that, that triggered me it started, it, it became personal. Um, I initially um, had, when I was in management, was diagnosed with hypertension and all sorts of stuff. And they started me on medication. And I thought to myself, okay, am I going to be on medication? My girls were like five and six. Am I going to be on medication for the rest of my life? What if something happens to me? What's going to happen to my girls? But God would have it in such a way that he showed me the natural ways of healing myself. And so I was able to get off all meds and was basically set free from, from hypertension. A few years later, I'm still working in the hospital, still doing my thing. A few years later, my husband was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Now I realize that, okay, I he started the traditional way. I thought, yeah, I know this. I'm a nurse. I can do this. I'm going to do all the things I'm supposed to do. And then I realized it didn't work. He was getting worse. And then the Lord showed me to go use the natural methods. And God would have it that God healed him. So he was totally reversed from type 2 diabetes, lost like 20 something pounds, got off all his meds and thought he was all new. But I was still working in the hospital. But then now my eyes became opened. I started seeing people losing limbs. I started seeing people going on dialysis from different ages. And I was not comfortable anymore. It's like my heart was like, why are these people dying when there is a way that God has given us that is proven? And so that's what I, I now the hospital was not security anymore. It was a constant trying to not see what I had to see that the the way in which we were doing it especially for type 2 diabetes was killing them and so that was what prompted me i remember one day i was sitting at my desk and i was thinking about it i just talked to somebody and it's like the, somebody said to me barbara you're not going to i knew i wanted i started living all alive and was helping people coach but nothing that could and so i remember sitting at my desk one day and it's like the Lord spoke to me and says, you will never know if it's going to work unless you step out on the water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so <laughs> I recognized that I had to, I couldn't hold on to one and try to do one. I had to step out on the water and trust God. And that was scary. And so that's what prompted me. And so every time I get what keeps me, I have to remember, this is not my journey. And if he's bring me through it, he, if he bring me to it, he has to bring me through it. Hallelujah. You know, I have to trust God. Wow. Uh, I like that, that it's how you're saying it's not your journey, um, mm -hmm. you know, like it's his and he's mm -hmm. taking you through it. That's powerful. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Let's uh, go on now to our next point here. Zechariah chapter three and verse two. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusation, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. This man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. Wow. So our tip here is major obstacles. And our question is, what is the last thing God delivered you from? And what did you think about him? Wow. So, your, so the, the backdrop is this is the high priest, Joshua. So he's the first high priest after the, um, the exile, um, when the temple was being built. And... Uh, and, and Satan, like he does with all of us, he shows God, this guy is a dirt bag. He's filthy. Mm -hmm. Look at his garments. And God is like, God never denied that. God is like, yeah, you might be a dirt bag, but you, 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 you open your eyes because I have covered him with my righteousness. I've changed his garment. Um, and so, so that kind of deliverance, you know, God was showing the prophet uh, about Joshua, though he might be um, faulty, but he's walking in the righteousness of God because he was delivered. He was pulled out from the, from the rubble. He was saved. Um, mm -hmm. So Trofina, talk about some of the obstacles you have faced in your business. Um, well, you just kind of mentioned one in terms of the, um, let's focus on that. Um, like, so you, you had a cancellation and I, I know about those. You had a cancellation, but yet still, you kind of dusted, you know, you kind of shook your shoulders. You're like, yeah, uh, but more is going to come. W what happened for you to get that kind of faith to know more would come? And how do you usually handle obstacles when they're thrown at your way and your business? You know, when my partner and I started, um, we said, you know, this was going to be a faith step. And so from the get from the start, um, this is how we usually look at things. So we've had experiences where um, we are even robbed from our oh invoices. Oh um, but we do not worry because three, it may be three, four months down the road, but we got back every cent, you know. So based on the past experiences, it teaches me that no matter what he will provide, the Bible says, that your bread and water will be sure. And also says, um, there's one that says, um, when we pray, give us this day, our daily bread. So we know that our daily bread will be met 
we hire people who uh, work for money for their families. And we know that God is going to provide work for them so that they can feed their families. And when they feed their families, we get to feed ours. So we have nothing to fear unless we forgot how God has um, has led us in the past. And so when a cancellation like this happens, we know that God is going to provide enough so that when the payroll comes, the staff can be paid. No, and this- so we don't worry about it. We've <laughs> learned not to worry about it because we've had situations before where we were worrying. And for example, when we just started, we wanted contracts and we were worrying. My parents were at my house and we're like, okay, daddy, mommy, this is what's happening. We need more contracts. And I kid you not, I woke up one Monday morning and a contract came in the fax. Nobody called me. They didn't send an email. We just saw the contract all signed. And I went and I knocked on my parents' room, the guest room door. And I said, a contract just came in the fax. And he said, well, I didn't even get up off my knees yet. Wow. <laughs> and you have what I am, what I asked for. So because of our experiences that we've had, we realize that once we seek Christ first, then everything else will be added because he said it in his word. So yes, it's, we have disappointments, but we've learned that we should just trust. I've also have friends in the same business who said the same thing. And so we know that God will provide. He's provided for our friends um, in the same business. So why can't, why would he not provide for us? I love it. I love it. Elder. Tell us about your biggest up and and you know, Sister Brown, you you answered me before I asked the question because I wanted to ask, give us a, a story, an actual experience where you were backed in a corner, you, you didn't see a way out, and boom, Jesus did something spectacular, and you were mm-hmm. able to hang on to that as a turning point to remind mm-hmm. you when you're discouraged, look, he could do it again. But you 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 kind of you gave the story before I asked for it. Um, Elder Barbara, tell us a story like that that you've had that you could look back on and say, you know what, he's going to do it again. So I'm, I'm going to say, before I even get to that story, I'm going to say, God is constantly delivering me from obstacles. One of them was this morning, myself, you know, because sometimes we tend to look at what we see and our minds can play games on us. But during this journey, he has shown me over and over again that this is really his journey and he's bringing me through it. Um, One of the major obstacles that I overcome was I remember when I just started um, this um, living all alive reversal type two diabetes. I remember I had a, a webinar and I had individual sign up, right? And that went well for the first webinar. And then I put in all the efforts again into the next one and everything that could go wrong, go wrong. Everything that could go wrong, go wrong. The media wasn't working. The people who had signed up didn't show up. Everything that could go wrong. And I remember after that webinar, I had zero, zero in the video signed up and I remember laying on my bed and I said God it's like I felt like a heavy load was on me and I'm like God seriously how am I going to get through this because it depends on me getting clients and continuing to work with them and I remember the Lord told me that he has to work on me mm-hmm. so that he can work through me before I can start experiencing the abundance that he has promised me. And that just dropped me for six because I was like, but I thought I was ready. I thought I knew, "Mm -mm, not ready. God knew he had to work on me. But even moving forward, as he continued to open doors, because every time I thought there was none, he sent somebody, either saw me on the internet or saw me on and sign up for the program. But what was even more, just this week, two weeks ago, about two, three weeks ago, I had finished my last cohort. They're done. I had zero people again. And I was laying down and I'm like, God, seriously, we're going to go through this again. (laughs) 
God, I was like, everything, the challenge that I was working on didn't work out. I was like, God, and to, would you have it that my phone just started to ring? And there was somebody says, oh, I, somebody recommend me, you, I want to sign up for your program, boom. Another person called, oh, somebody recommend me, I want to sign up for your program. And there we go again, God came through. And I just say, Lord, when am I going to learn to trust you? It constantly is, it's like he, we have to get there. As he said, I have to keep on putting my foot in the water before I see the, the, the river path. And so he constantly, and even when there are times when, you know, you, I'm feeling like I can't do this. And I mean, even though I've been a nurse for so many years, there are times when I'm like, do I, when I, when you tend to look at other people who are in the business or doing stuff, you're like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I don't have all the skills. And God continuously show me that it's not what I can do, but it's what he can do through me. And that's why he has to work on me, work through me. Let me ask to get you. the work done. So those you. are some of the obstacles that he's constantly bringing me through. Let me ask you this, though. Let me ask you this. Because your, your, your business, okay, like, like um, Trafina is looking for contracts. Mm -hmm. um, you, on the other hand, you are, well, for now, this is what I understand about your business. Mm -hmm. You look for individual clients that you coach them, um, you know, you, you walk them through how to get healed from their type 2 diabetes, how to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, how, now you're a sweet person mm -hmm. um, and you're also a leader at your, at your local church. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, you know, how do you set boundaries and say, look, this is going to cost $50 for the introductory session? Because, you know, um, uh, our people, <laughs> I say this with uh, reservation, but our people love free, you know? In fact, some, some people, I offer them stuff for free and they still want a discount, you know? People love, <laughs> people love free. So how do you get, and especially when it comes to church stuff, they're like, well, the health message, you know, we should be just giving this as a ministry. And ministry usually means free. <laughs> how, how do you over navigate that? People who you know, you know, um, who see you as sweet and wonderful and giving, how do you set that boundary? You say, uh, no, this is going to cost. How do you get the courage to do that, you know, without um, damaging the relationship or feeling awkward or working through your awkwardness? Well, that's what God had to bring me through first and foremost, because truly I went into this business with, with a whole heap of heart. And because as a nurse, you don't focus on, money. You always want to just give, give, give. And I recognize during the journey, I mean, Trifina, one of my, I had to remind me that I had to <laughs> keep on, you know, asking. Um, at first it was difficult and how I navigate that and God, you know, I struggled with that and God showed me. What he showed me is that it's actually and I, I, I want everybody to take me very, don't, don't jump at it. It's almost sinful to offer somebody something without giving them a chance to earn it. In the sense that when, what do you say? And how can I say that clearly where now I will not offer it free for someone who really want, who wants to change? Because I've seen where I did offer free services and can I tell you something? The people who got the service free didn't even show up. They mm -hmm. didn't participate. They had no drive in it. Some were well, some that show up, but they didn't have any drive in it. The ones who had to pay for their services always end up reversed. Never miss a class. On point. Get in. So I recognize that for me to offer something to you free is giving is setting you up to fail. It's almost setting you up to fail. And that was that's that's kind of harsh to me. But then I was I was thinking that there's nothing in, you know, the God gives us life and he gives all of us 24 hours. And he, but we have to be obedient to what he says. And so that's where and sometimes so now it, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't bother me anymore. At first it was like, 
I just want to do this for free. But no, I recognize it's not, it's a mindset. I am helping you help yourself by allowing you to be an integral part of the journey. And what we, what we tend to get for free, we don't even, we never appreciate. And so that's why we don't get results. So I don't have a, an issue with it anymore. And that helps me to communicate even more clearer because I'm in it as much to help you as much as you want to be helped. Got it. Right. Okay, <clears throat> let's go on to our last point now. This has been really um, great, what you've all been sharing with us. And we want to go to our last point now here, which is Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 8. I will guard my temple and protect it from invading army, armies. I am watching closely to ensure that no more foreign oppressors overrun my people's land. So our tip here is facing down fears with faith. Our question is, how do you remind yourself that God is greater than your greatest fears? Wow. And Miss Miss Brown, Mrs. Brown, yes. that, that, that's your question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, when I read when I read the book of Zechariah, what I see is um, instructions, then I see people made choices, and I see consequences, and I also see deliverance. Mm. And so um when I, when I when I fear, I have to go back to God's words and to read his promises and to read his instructions, because he said, if you seek me first, everything else will be added on to you. So I consistently, how do I do it? How do I remind myself? Is that I consistently read his words. I pray with a group of strong women who believe the same thing. We do this every morning. I stay around them because they encourage me. And they, if I'm down, they will send me some text from the Bible that will build me up. Um, I try to um, remember certain texts from the Bible, texts text such as the angel of the Lord encamp encamps around those that fear him and deliver at them. A cattle on a thousand hills are his. And so everything is belongs to him and I am his child and he's going to give me enough. We have a text that says we have this confidence that if we ask according to his will, he is there to give it to us. And he says, I know the plans that I have for you. I look at past stories such as Peter. I think we started by talking about Peter walking on water, um, which was that was not conventional. That's nothing that you would be here, but you have to have faith. And so from those stories, I know that he will always restore the dry places. Look at the story of Ruth. She lost everything and she stuck with her mother in law. But then she gained everything again by the time she met Mr. Boaz. And so um, for me, I, um, I replace fear with faith through consistently um, encouraging myself by reading his words, listening to what my friends have to tell me about his words and just keep talking to him. You, to I, I, I can tell you prepared for this. You are good. You are really uh -huh. good. I like it. Uh -huh. let, me, let me ask a side question though. Um, uh -huh. Good with that question. One of the, one of the, the, the challenge I, I had running a similar business to yours uh -huh. is the high turnover, like I said earlier. Yes. Um, how do you keep your, your nurses? Because nursing, you have so much option. I mean, during the pandemic, I had friends making 10 grand a week doing travel nursing. Mm -hmm. so how do you really compete? Because obviously your contract is going to pay you this amount. Mm -hmm. You could only pay your nurses that amount. Mm -hmm. How do you compete and keep your nurses? What's the difference? How do you stand out? Why should, as a nurse, why would I come and work for your agency? So the one thing my partner and I maintain is that we compete with ourselves, not with, because if you match yourself against other people, you get you can get discouraged. And so and so nurse turnover right now for the world is a problem. In fact, employee turnover for the entire world right now is an issue. You go to restaurants and you'll see that they're closed or you'll see a sign 
people didn't show up for work, be kind to those who do. And so it's not just in nursing, but how we deal with it is we just um, remind ourselves that we are a temporary staffing agency. So um, if we have a contract with a nurse for three months, on the fourth month, that nurse does not have to stay with us. And so when you have your mindset that way, you just keep, we have a plan for the turnover. We keep hiring. We just hire. And like you said, you'll have a hundred. We've never had a hundred, but you hire, you just keep hiring so that when people fall off, you still maintain. And you know what? I, I still say that, God's, that God provides all our needs according to his riches and glory. I will pray and say, Father, we need three nurses. My partner and I will pray and it happens. And so I'm happy to, to say that God provided enough for us so that my husband um, is working with us full time now. And mm -hmm. that's, I mean, he does the hiring. Um, and so he every day is just hire people so that we'll always have enough to, to, to keep us going. What a journey of faith. Um, Ella Barbara? Tell us how you how you remind yourself that God is greater than your greatest fears. And, and you've had some fears, especially waking up with zero clients. <laughs> yes. Um, how do I? It starts for me, not always like that, but it, all, it starts with I have to eat the real food first. Right. What does that mean? I have to eat the word of God. Like it really doesn't matter what's going on in my life. I recognize that if I am not fed, I'm going to be weak. So how do I overcome it? I always ask the Lord to make me to make time. So by spending time in the word of God and asking, how is this applying to my life? Like personalizing it to me. So, and also by connecting with strong women who are also in there supporting me, I find that when, when I'm at that point where I feel like I'm done, I can say, sisters, just pray for me. And I'll get people just praying for me. And I know that. And, 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 and one of the ways, in, in, in addition to the sisters and spending time with the word, what I recognize is that I have to constantly remind myself where God has brought me from. Because sometimes I find myself just so focused on the moment, not remembering that it's the same God who, when I had zero, the same God when I didn't know where I was going, the same God when I lacked the knowledge that brought me from. And looking back on my childhood and seeing how God has miraculously brought me out of a place where in, you know, I was initially in a foster care to a place where my mom had died and how he has brought me to this point at a constant. So most times I have to self-taught myself. I'm going to be honest. I have to read the words of God loud, remind myself, you are a child of God. I One of the verses that um, has always kept me from a child till now, I didn't understand, was Romans 8 verse 28. It says, for all things work together for good. So it doesn't matter what the situation, when the fear comes, I always say, Lord, expand my thoughts. Let me see the way you see it. And when I start asking God to show me his vision, it's always good because nothing that he allows to come into my life that caused fear is, is, is that caused fear is not from him. The fear is from the enemy. And so I recognize if I can just look through the lens of heavenly perspective, I always am able to rejoice through it. And so that's how I overcome like my fears, allow my faith to overcome my fears by just asking God to keep me focused and being kind of humble, or I could say, sometimes he has to drag me kicking and screaming, I'm going to be honest, but, right. <laughs> but walk in the path that he says I'm supposed right. to walk. Wow. I, 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 go ahead. If I could just say something else about faith, like I'm so glad for this series because you're using real life stories because sometimes we hear people say, I have faith, I have faith, and it's so abstract. Um, and you don't get the examples, but um, talking about faith, I knew I had it just a little bit, but when you're working uh, for a set paycheck every two weeks, that's just, that's a paycheck to me. That's not faith. Faith is something you cannot see, mm. but you know, you believe that God is going to do it for you. And so mm. I have had to experience this in order to say, oh, so this is faith. Mm -hmm. This is faith. 
Right. By seeing a contract come through the fax machine that you have right. no idea where it was coming Please. from. I'm like, oh, oh, so this is what that looks like. Yeah. And so this was a, as you say, crazy faith, unrealistic faith. Yeah. Um, it's been a, a faith journey for me, but I'm yeah. happy about it because we I get to see it. I get to talk to Barbara sometimes and hear mm-hmm. hers and other ladies that we have as friends so it's beautiful the real life examples that you can live from you know what what i'm hearing from you you know i i didn't even know i was bringing i thought i was bringing two entrepreneurs on today i didn't know I was bringing two, <laughs> two preachers my goodness <laughs> you women are on fire for jesus my good and i i really love how faith is integral to your business and i i just pray favor on 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 your businesses that it would keep growing and blooming and blossoming um one of the things that stand out from what you're sharing is it your sharing reminds me of romans 10 17 which says faith comes by hearing mm. and hearing the word of god and that word mm. hearing it did not say faith comes by having heard mm. hearing is the is a present continuous tense Yes. It's something you have to keep being fed with, you know, like the mm-hmm. trees planted by the waters. So, yes. so bo- both, 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 um, Trofina, you and Barbara, you all said the same thing. You have a group of um, God filled people that you invite into your space to pour into your life. You don't fill yourself with negative people that wants mm-hmm. to just complain about their woes in life, but you also find yourself grounded in the word yourself. Yeah. And then you remind yourself of where God has, God has brought you from. And you, you keep singing that song. You may not know how, you may not know when. But he'll do it again. And he keeps doing he'll it. Do it again. And, you know, one, one verse that always resonated with me, you know, is a, I can't remember, but it says God will never put his people to shame. He, 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 because for him not to do what he says he will do, when you put your, he, that, he, that means he can't be, and that's impossible, you know? So I'm always like, you know, God's reputation is on the line as I submit to him also. So he's not going to not do what he says he will do. And I have that, that, that confidence that he who has started this thing is going to finish it to the end. Um, may not like the way in, in which he does it because yes, I would like to know how A, B, C, D, E is going to work out. And but he says no, you got to just trust me. Put your foot in the water, and the water will will open. So that's what I, I you know, I've learned. You think, and if you think about it, if in the first two months we became millionaires, what would we have to look forward to? Like, where would the faith be? Mm-hmm. Which not saying that's not possible but he knows that we have some work to do first so you know it gives us um that trust yeah it gives us the groundwork that we have to do with ourselves in order to to be where he wants us to be and to be able to listen to him Amen. Amen. And even just one other thing as as Trifina background has a tree I'm reminded that God has always I always remind me of a tree, like a tree does not bear fruit when it's little tiny seedling. The tree has to be supported. It has to grow to the point where its limbs are sturdy to give the fruits because of everything. And so you have to, when I, when I start learning that God has to make me the person that is able to produce that, which he has already put inside of me. And it requires that he has to let me grow. He has to mold me, he has to mulch me, he has to prune me. And then when I'm ready, then the fruits will come. But the fruits, most of us, and I'm going to be honest, when I started, I had it all planned. Dum, 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 get it. I thought the fruits were going to come because I have boo, 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 boo. And God said, uh-uh, you ain't no tree yet. You got to be a tree <laughs> with a good, strong root in, in me to get those fruits. The fruits will come, but, but I got to prepare you so that you can carry those fruits. What, you, what you're saying is you have to grow up to blow up. You have to grow up, to grow up. <laughs> in Christ. It's not just grow up to blow up and grow in up in Christ to blow up in Christ. Okay, <laughs> hey, thank you very much, ladies. So, Dexter, we have episode 21 coming up next week. 
Again, it's um, aired on Sunday evening at 7.30 on PlantationSDA.tv. We want you to share with your family and friends, and you can watch it, of course, anytime. So, Dexter, episode 21, what is that? Going we, to be we're going to be jumping into the next book, which is the book of Malachi. And mm-hmm. I, have, I have some of my some of my favorite class members joining us, one of my most controversial friends. Um, Raphael and Maria del Carmen. Raphael has such a story. He was rescued from a boat by the American Coast Guard, a little raft. He spent over six days and nights underwater fleeing from Cuba, not knowing if he's going to be captured. Um, and his wife had to go through different countries just to be re- reunited with him. I mean, really powerful stories. They're going to be sharing from Malachi. And in Malachi, this is what we are dealing with. The book of Malachi deals with our hypocrisy, increasing self-awareness. And, and that's what we're going to be grappling with. Malachi is so powerful. It's, it's, one, of the, it's one of the only books that asks so many questions. Mm. You know, Malachi mm-hmm. would say, you say, you know, how could you say? And, and, and so Malachi does two things to get at teaching us to increase our self-awareness. It asks a lot of questions. But it also has a lot of self-talk. And that's what it says. You say that God does not care. Or you say that. And and so he keeps doing that. So read ahead the book of Malachi. Look for all the self-talk in the book. Look for all the questions he's asking and ask yourself, how does this grow my Mm self-awareness? How does this help me to embrace my own hypocrisy? Right? So Raphael and Maria is going to drop the knowledge on us next Sunday, 7.30. (laughs) Tune in, everybody. Okay, we look forward wow. to that. So to close here, we're just going to close with a word of prayer. And Trafina, if you could pray for us, please. Sure. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for giving us the ability to do this session. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies, your grace, your provision. Father, as we see in the example of how you provide for your children in the story of Zachariah, Lord, we know that you will provide for us. We know that you will give us our needs according to your riches in glory. So help us to have that continued faith and trust in you that you are going to come through for us. We thank you for um, Dexter and his wife, and we thank you for the Bible and mask. And we ask you to continue to give us vision that we will move forward in faith. In Mm -hmm. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.